Travel consideration provided by. Life for the past couple years has taken a detour. I know mine has. Well, it's time to move forward and Nutrisystem can help. You jump on the scale and you're like, yes! Get new premium meals with up to 30 grams of protein. Plus, get new restaurant faves that taste like your favorite restaurant. I lost 65 pounds and I feel better than ever. I'm proof it worked for me. Nutrisystem changed my life. Get back on track with Nutrisystem. Go online or call to get 50% off and start losing weight today. I think it's fair to say we love it when stars tell us things that really go on behind the scenes, like fair the real to say, deal. That's what I want. I right. want it all. You know, even Jerry Seinfeld gave Rachel Smith something on his show about nothing. <laughs> Night, everybody. Bye, y'all. What's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> what do you really think the show was about now that you, you know, fast forward almost 30 years? I think the show was about having fun and making. Happening now. After the San Antonio Police Department and the FBI gave an update on the disappearance of three year old Lena Kill, many are still left with the question of where is she located? How several businesses have stepped in to help, including putting out these flyers. With the Omicron surge, airlines are seeing more flight disruptions, but the CDC just loosened its COVID-19 protocols. What the airline industry is saying. A strong cold front is on the horizon. I'll be back to let you know when it arrives and what it means for temperatures. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, day Nine and still no answers. The search continuing for three year old Lena Keel. Yeah, she's the little girl who disappeared from the playground at her northwest side apartment complex last week. The San Antonio Police Department says that it has received plenty of tips and calls and now other groups are joining their search. Our Jaffney Gray has the latest. We have no new leads that would take us to where Lena is or what might have happened to her. But 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 I want to emphasize that we have not lessened the intensity of this investigation. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says the search for three year old Lena Keel has gone beyond the Villas del Cabo apartment complex located on Fredericksburg Road. Despite shutting down the command post, McManus says that they continue to have several officers on the scene and several canine units combing through green belts between the apartment complex and Loop 410. We don't want to leave any stone unturned including researching the dumpsters at the complex. We wanted to research it and make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, maybe maybe a potential suspect would have thrown something out, maybe evidence or, or anything pertinent to the investigation or search efforts. Police continue to investigate tips, surveillance video and social media in what McManus continues to describe as a missing persons case. Currently, McManus doesn't suspect foul play. If we suspected foul play, the investigation would turn. Lena's disappearance has encouraged several in the community to join in her search efforts, including businesses in this plaza that's near the apartment complex where she disappeared. Some putting out this flyer for her safe return. It helps, you know, posting on social media. So I've, I've posted on social media a couple of times on my own personal page, mm -hmm. but just to have the flyers in the store to maybe somebody sees it and grabs it, knows something, mm -hmm. anything that helps. There's nothing that we haven't done to try to find her and it's, frustrating and disheartening and disappointing that we haven't come up with something yet. The reward for information uh, into Lena's whereabouts remains of $150,000. You can call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit. That number is 210-207-7660. Live at Public Safety Headquarters, Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. And other news, let's, let's talk about the Omicron variant. You know, people are looking at the latest case numbers for COVID and they're left scratching their heads because the CDC reduced the isolation time for people with COVID from 10 days to five. And two industries just don't get what's going on. Daryl Forges has a closer look at the confusion and the concerns over these changing protocols. Mounting criticism after the CDC changes its isolation recommendations. Some frontline workers are raising concerns about the move. This is not the time to be lessening. Our staffing concerns have not been addressed and measures like this will make it worse instead of better. On Monday, the CDC announced new guidelines saying people testing positive for COVID-19 only need to stay home for five days if they don't have symptoms and if they wear a mask around others for at least five more days or if their symptoms improve over that time. If you are asymptomatic and you are infected, we want to get people back 
to the jobs, particularly those with essential jobs. The move comes as Omicron cases around the country surge. The U.S. has a seven-day average of more than 237,000 new daily COVID-19 cases, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. And CDC and HHS data shows that pediatric hospitalizations are up nearly 35 percent nationwide in just the past week. This Omicron variant is such a game changer in terms of its high, high transmissibility. It's like this big uh, virus blizzard. That's why you're seeing so many kids getting infected. Some airline workers are also criticizing the CDC's new guidelines, even as they deal with an Omicron fuel surge in COVID-19 cases that led to crew shortages and flight disruptions. How they are going to implement this to make sure that it is only for people who are asymptomatic, who are coming back to work, so that people are not forced to come back to work when they're still sick. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. Now, we've been talking about this for a few days now. Trouble finding COVID-19 tests, those at-home tests in particular. If you're searching for a test and you don't have an appointment, the city says there are two places that are accepting walk-ins. The Center for Advanced Wellness at Botts Lane and TPC Parkway, it's accepting walk-ins. The addresses are on your screen. They're open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, with the exception of New Year's Eve. You can also schedule a COVID-19 testing appointment through curative.com. You just type in your zip code and they'll show you the location nearest you. You can find the next available appointment by clicking on each location. You can also find a list of more testing locations at covid19.sanantonio.gov. So now we're learning more about the man who was shot and killed on Christmas Day. He is 24 year old Trevor James Beeman. Police say that his neighbor killed him Saturday morning. The suspect is 28 year old Mason Sayer Lovitz. Beeman suffered injuries to his neck and torso and died on Larkspur right near Lock Hill Selma Road and West Avenue. A fired Bear County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant not getting her job back. This comes after an arbitrator sided with the sheriff's office when she appealed her termination. Lieutenant Roxanne Mathau was fired earlier this year after she posted pictures of herself attending a protest at the U.S. Capitol. This is the one back on January 6, which of course turned into a deadly riot. Sheriff Javier Salazar handed her her order of dismissal back in June, but she appealed the decision. That case argued before an arbitrator where she explained their being there allowed her to be present for a quote historic event and i just thought it was the most ridiculous thing i'd ever heard it's, it's not like you're standing there for the for the signing of the declaration of independence okay that's a historic event you're there when fellow americans lost their lives you're there and and there's people that wear a uniform very similar to ours that, that were assaulted and and lost their lives uh during that event that's nothing to be proud of Five people did die during the riot or in the aftermath. One protester was killed when she was shot. More than 130 police officers were injured and more than 700 people have been criminally charged for their participation. And speaking of the siege on the U.S. Capitol, it could be summer when we see a report from an investigation into what happened. An aide to the January 6th Select Committee says the goal is to have a completed report by fall of 2022. And this same aide is emphasizing that it's really a goal here, not a deadline. It would be a first look at what the committee has been handling, mostly behind closed doors, including hundreds of witness depositions. You can look out for them. More patrols are going to be on the roads this New Year's Eve, and they'll be looking for drunk drivers. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Sam, you spoke with SAPD and the Bear County Sheriff. What are they saying about this? Well, Stephanie and Ursula, Sheriff Salazar tells me a number of special operations and even street crimes and gang units will be out on the streets looking for DWI offenses during the New Year's holiday. Meanwhile, SAPD's traffic unit will be working extended hours, too. We're told they'll be on major highways and other roadways, but officers say they can't do it alone. We are asking the public to think ahead. Um, man, if you see a friend that's impaired or uh, may have been drinking tonight, take his keys. Uh, call him a ride. Schuler says they will be on the lookout for speeders and reckless drivers as well. With just a few days left in 2021, there's already been more than 200 fatality crashes on San Antonio roadways. A
pretty high toll there. Uh, taking a look at traffic this evening, volume a little bit lighter because of the holiday, but there are some places where we're uh, seeing some traffic, and that includes 1604 on the northwest side. So westbound, eight minutes, uh, five minutes the other way. Of course, those times a lot better than we normally see during uh, th normally see when we're not in the holiday. Uh, this is looking here at Northwest Loop 410. Some delays westbound near Bandera and then approaching Highway 151. So nine minutes. So a few uh, traffic spots here in there. And let's go over to Adam taking a look at the forecast. We like to see a lot of green on your map there, Sam. Around here, the clouds finally broke. Too little too late, of course, uh, in terms of boosting our temperatures. We had a high of 72 today. That was here in San Antonio after a warm morning low of 66 degrees. So both above average, but Warren's back here in Del Rio, 80 degrees, 80 in Panama Maria. Floresville right now, 78 degrees, but where the clouds have held tight. I mean, look at Bulverde, 69, along with Bernie, 69, Canyon Lake as well at 69 degrees, Universal City, 72. It's those stubborn clouds that uh, took too long to clear out to really allow our temperatures to boost. But throughout this evening, we'll fall through the 60s gradually, mild and humid out there, not much of a breeze, pretty much a calm wind. It's going to lead to some more fog developing late tonight and for the first part of tomorrow. But it does look like the dry line is going to pay us a visit tomorrow and then a strong cold front slated for the weekend. We'll talk how that changes temperatures in a bit, Steph. All right, Adam, thank you. Now in consumer news today, we're going to talk about gas prices. Yes, you've been noticing this. They've been going down. But here's the thing. We shouldn't get too comfortable because Gas Buddy is predicting that that's not going to last. The company expects the national average to increase to $3.41 a gallon by next year, which is almost 40 cents more than this year's average of $3.02. Gas Buddy says the highest gas prices will come in May, where they'll reach about $3.79 a gallon. All these predictions are based on low oil production from OPEC and also refinery closures because of COVID. But keep in mind, that regardless of everything we just told you, gas prices are difficult to predict because on the other side, we have the federal government and Wall Street analysts who think that gas prices may continue to drop next year. So what you gonna do? Yeah, I know. And here's another issue. Rain, wind, or fire, or freezes, they're all part of natural disasters. And if they hit your home severely enough, you're in for some damage. So when should you call to make a claim? And when do you hold off? We'll explain next. Health on wheels. That is what the San Antonio Food Bank's Mobile Mercado is offering the city of San Antonio. We are talking fruits and vegetables and even an on-site nutritionist. Yep, we're going to talk about it next. This essay Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Pam Hospitals. Hi, my name is Kristen Meyer. And I'm Andre Herrera Mendoza. As veterans of the United States Navy, we want to salute you our military veterans, families, and first responders, and all those with a loved one not present during the holidays. Thank you for all you do. All right, so tonight at six, we are continuing the conversation about COVID-19, including what local doctors are saying about the CDC's new isolation protocols. You really need to be wearing a mask irrespective of your isolation or quarantine period. It's a lot of stuff to get through. We're going to sit down with University Health to make sense of this reduced isolation period. The CDC is now, now recommending that people with COVID isolate for five days instead of 10. So there's lots to sort out and we're going to get through it at six. Living in Texas, we know all about the damaging storms, the wind, the rain, the lightning, even deep freezes as we saw last winter. And when your home is hit hard, that means filing an insurance claim. And of course, that's confusing. So here are some tips to navigate the system. We lost everything. A lightning strike causing a fire that engulfed Angel Losado's home. At that moment, you don't know what to do, how to react. After making sure that everyone was okay, Angel called his homeowner's insurance agent and filed a claim. 
But what if damage to your house or property isn't this extensive? We normally say don't file a claim for any damage that's below your deductible. But the exception is water damage. That's because a small issue could signal a bigger, more expensive mess lurking in your walls or ceiling. It's important to document the damage. Just use your phone to take photos and videos. This will help you list items that were destroyed or need repair. And if you need to make repairs right away, keep the receipts to file with your claim. Next comes the walkthrough with the insurance adjuster. With the pandemic, some of these may be virtual, and sometimes your video and photos are enough. You'll then receive a settlement that outlines what your insurance will cover. If you think it's not enough, if you feel that what you're offered isn't enough to cover all the damages, get another estimate to show your insurance company. And if you're denied anything, you should ask your insurer why. And keep in mind, insurance claims can take time, so it's important that you keep your paperwork organized. Their main goal is to fight in food insecurity right here in San Antonio, from fresh fruits to healthy non-perishables. This is what you can find in the San Antonio Food Bank's Mobile Mercado food truck. People can just go there, grab a bag, fill it with fruits and veggies, all for free. Mobile Mercado targets areas where more people are food insecure. It's tight for everybody right now, just with everything going on. So. The prices are increasing in some places as well, so it really, really helps everybody um, in the community with, it, with all of their needs. Here's something else. The food bank also has nutritionists in the mobile truck to help families learn how to incorporate healthy foods into their everyday lives. The Mobile Mercado is also stationed at University Health Systems parking lot on Tuesdays, and we have all of that information for you on ksat.com. With weather like this, it kind of feels like you could be growing vegetables in your backyard this <laughs> right? winter. Yeah, it's almost like you could have tomatoes out there right yeah, now, isn't it? Why not? Well, until this cold front this weekend, we could actually go. have our first freeze. <laughs> yes, that's the only reason why we couldn't. We could have our first freeze officially in San Antonio by early next week, by Monday morning. So let's talk about it. More fog and drizzle for the morning hours. It's going to be the general theme here, with one exception, and that's Thursday. That's because the dry line visits us tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, the cold front that's going to be on the way this weekend. Let's take a look at our temperatures out there right now. And as usual, very sunshine dependent. Where the clouds have held tight, temperatures are consequently a bit cooler. Uvalde 69 along with Kerrville. Carrizo Springs at 68, only 71 officially in San Antonio. But you get into the sunshine, Beeville 78, Del Rio 80 degrees, and even Pleasanton, not far from San Antonio, in the upper 70s. And across the state elsewhere, there is some cooler air off to the north right now. But the coldest air, of course, is across the Northland and in Canada. So you look at the big picture of temperatures. Yeah, we drop down to freezing in Denver, North Platte, Omaha, and then you get farther north and you get below zero. But check out these Canadian temperatures. They're double digits below zero. Saskatoon at 20 below, Yellowknife at 35 below. That's the core of the cold air that's going to be plunging southward. And we're not going to get hit by the core of the cold air. That's going to stay off to the north of us. But for the rest of this week on through Saturday, we'll be near 80 degrees for high temperatures. Cold air bottled up to the north. It pushes southward through Texas during the day on Saturday. And the colder air settles in for Sunday and the early part of next week. We are not looking at a prolonged freeze. Not even everybody's going to hit freezing. There will be some pockets of freezing temperatures for a couple of mornings behind this front, but we're not looking at anything big or long term here. Here's another way to look at our temperature trend. Look at this bar graph, you know, right near 80 degrees tomorrow through Saturday and then boom on Sunday, the second day of the new year, we're down to 53 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. That's as warm as it'll get. So quite a contrast to what we've been experiencing lately. And it's also going to get rid of the humidity, but we've got our, the West Texas dry land that's going to pay us a visit tomorrow. Right now it's far to the west of us, just creeping into Rock Springs, dew point of 39, junction 41, and Ozona, a dew point of 36. So that dry line's out there, but it's going to drop in gradually during the day tomorrow. So some of us will actually get a little break in the mugginess during the day tomorrow. At noon, it starts to move into the hill country, into the afternoon. It's tough to find the exact placement of where it's going to set up, but roughly along I-35, we can expect that dry line. So there will be a big difference in dew points. Muggy closer to the coastline, closer to the Rio Grande, 
a reprieve from the mugginess and lower dew points. Even as close as Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, we could have dew points in the 40s tomorrow afternoon. Then we get into Thursday and the muggy air starts to move back into place. So some of us tomorrow into early Thursday will have a brief break in the humidity. I think especially west of I-35, but we all get rid of the humidity by Sunday and into early next week. Very dry air moving in behind that strong cold front. Big picture weather wise, you have the activity around the Great Lakes, upper Midwest and the Northland. That's where the main potent system is right now, dumping snow, rain and a mixture of all the above there, but around here we just can't drum up any showers. Just that dampness in the morning again tomorrow. A little bit of fog and drizzle at 63. Then by the afternoon we make it up to 79 with sunshine. Thursday morning, not as much fog and then windy late Saturday through early Sunday with that big temperature drop. All right, Adam, we're waiting for the coolness. Finally, I'm looking at those <laughs> temperatures because uh, tomorrow the Alma Bowl. Tomorrow, people will be nice and warm inside the Valero Alamo Bowl at there. the Alamo Dome watching Oregon and Oklahoma. Today was the final press conference for the coaches where we got to talk with Coach Stoops and Coach McClendon. Plus, in the NBA, the Spurs definitely have a lot of fight coming up. The Valero Alamo Bowl head coaches held a joint press conference at the Alamo Dome this morning. Oklahoma interim head coach Bob Stoops and Oregon interim field boss Brian McClendon met with the media. Stoops coached OU from 1999 to 2016, leading them to nine bowl victories and the national championship in 2000. So is this unexpected game something he needs to punctuate his career? As far as do I need something to punctuate what I've done? No. I don't, that's just not my style. And you guys that have all covered me and ladies know that isn't my style. I don't count wins. I don't count, like, I need this to finish my career. Not really, you know, but am I going to do everything I can to win? Absolutely, you know, and try and, you know, give our players the best opportunity to win. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't look at it as a big deal, for, you know, as, as far as my career goes. Before his promotion, McClendon served as the Ducks passing game coordinator and wide receivers coach, which are still his responsibilities. Now, there's a report the Ducks could be down as many as 31 players tomorrow for several reasons. So coach was asked if that's true. It's not 31. I don't know exactly what the number is to be able to, to, be, able to be able to correct or rectify what, what's out there. And I didn't even know that until you said that. But um, but it, it is not we're not missing 31 guys right now from, from, okay. from you know, out of 85. I mean, now, uh, like I said, but but we are down some guys and, and, and depth and depth could be an issue uh, at some certain spots. Ducks and Sooners will play football tomorrow night, 815 at the Alamo Dome. The Spurs fought hard but lost at home to the Utah Jazz 110-104 last night. Utah played without injured guard Donovan Mitchell, and the Spurs were down DeJounte Murray due to health and safety protocols. First quarter, the two sides went back and forth until the Jazz took the lead for good, 20-19, off a Jordan Clarkson three-pointer. Utah would go up by as many as 18 points in the fourth, but the Spurs went on an 8-0 run to close within six with 22 seconds left in the game. The Spurs' will to win is definitely there. Yeah, I mean, um, we're just getting better each each game. Um, we compete, and we're just learning. Uh, a lot of young guys, so we just learn each and every day and, and just getting better and better. And it's all about learning and getting better and better for the young Spurs. They'll close out their three-game homestand tomorrow night, 730, with the Miami Heat. All better right. results, hopefully. <laughs> yes. yes, fingers crossed. We'll be right back. Tomorrow morning, low 60s locally. You get west of I-35. We'll have some upper 50s. By the afternoon, we're up near 80. I mean, even into the 80s in some locations, especially Creasel Springs, Scatula, Pleasanton, all in the low to mid 80s. Even Elmendorf, Von Army can make it to 81 tomorrow afternoon. The colder air comes Sunday. We could have our first freeze officially by Monday morning. Stay right. tuned. Thank you for watching the News at 5. World News is next. I'll see you.